Hi everyone, my name is Reshma and I am the Senior Vendor Engagement Manager at Food Panda. Today in this webinar, we'll be covering about menu management. So basically to kind of look into um, how you can update your menu, what is menu management about, and what are the few tips and tricks you can do to improve your menus. Before we begin, I also want to share that we will be sending you a survey feedback form after the session. If you like today's session and want to learn more on different topics, share with us the different topics that you're looking at. Obviously, if you like the presentation that I just shared with you, you can also put in a word or two for me. Secondly, if you have any questions, please use the chat system. We will be answering questions throughout the presentation as well as end of the presentation. And lastly, I always encourage staff that have joined the webinar to also share with your team about it. And if you think you want to learn more about it or even share with your team, feel free to use this webinar recording or you can bring them to the university section part of the restaurant hall. So let's talk about today. What will we be discussing? We will look into um, the importance of menu management, basic terms and guidance that you can use. Next, obviously, how to organize your menu, common mistakes that vendors are making today, and lastly, how to be more efficient. So let's talk about the why is it so important to improve your menus. Do know that a lot of customers, once they have got an issue with a particular vendor, they would not reorder again. 92% of rejected orders do not reorder from that exact vendor. Next, it is very important to know that customers take about two to three, three minutes every single time they decide what they want to order. This is on average. So if you can make your menu as easy as possible, as readable as possible, and as exciting for them as possible, we predict an order is bound to happen. Lastly, it's also important to update your photographs. Why? Because we all know that we eat with our eyes first. So let's get started. Let's talk about listing and banner photos, categories and menu features. What is a banner photo? A banner photo is basically a photo with multiple dishes, um, which appears at the start um, of um, your menu when a person is scrolling, right? So as you can see this image here, you can see how one banner has multiple images and that depicts what your restaurant is actually selling. Next, on the contrary, we talk about listing photo. So listing photo, on the other hand, is when a customer is scrolling through the application, then they see a photograph and that also, to some extent, depicts what your restaurant is selling. Now, what is a category? A category is basically the various different sections within your menu that you are selling. So example, if you're selling beverages, main course, appetizer, maybe some sort of starter, salad, different types of rice, different types of noodles. These are different category items that you can create, right? So these are category. Even if tomorrow you have a festival like Hari Raya, Christmas, Chinese New Year, you want to create a separate category for those, you can as well. So now let's just have a quick quiz to just see if you guys understood what I just shared about listing, banner photos, and categories. All right. So this is a listing and banner photo. Will we approve it or will we reject it? Remember, it has to be one photograph. Yes, you guys are absolutely right. It is one photograph. It gives you a glance of the various items that the restaurant is selling. So we approve this photo. Next, listing or banner photo. Will we approve or reject it? Look at it very, very clearly and calmly. You are absolutely right. We are going to be rejecting it because we do not allow any sort of watermarks and any sort of promotion on the photographs that we have, right? So the 30% should not be there and the watermark should not be there. Next, let's look at this image. Again, I repeat, one photograph. So will we approve or reject it? Yes, you're absolutely right. We will be rejecting it because we do not allow collages for your listing or banner photos. 
Now, let's look into another set of terminologies. Will be the first one will be talking about item description and second one, dish photo. These two are topics which we will be talking a lot about a lot in, sorry, I'm going to correct myself. We will be talking a lot about these two different items because we realize that customers really, really heavily depend on it, right? So item description is really giving your customers the description or the understanding of what you're selling to them. If you are giving them any sort of side dishes or condiments, please use the description section to kind of share with them as well. In terms of any sort of allergies that you want to add in, you can also use the description section. Next, the dish photos. Dish photo is very, very important because customers are ordering with their eyes. And if they see a menu full of photographs, they will be excited to scroll and understand more what they can be ordering. Next, we look into item name. Item name is purely what is the item name that you will be selling to them, right? So example, if it's mi goreng, if it's nasi goreng, if it's burger, fish burger, chicken burger, so on and so forth. Always specify well with your item name as well. Don't just rely fully on item description. Next will be variation. So variations can be large, regular, you know, medium, and so on and so forth. So those are the kinds of variation, hot, cold, anything of that, that you will be um, adding with the item as well. Next will obviously be choice groups. So choice groups can be a modification that the customers can make. So example, if I want to add avocado, add anchovies, add egg, and so on and so forth. Choices will be the different choices that I just mentioned, eggs, avocados, anchovies, uh, salad leaves, no tomatoes, so on and so forth. And lastly will be the minimum and maximum number that people can add, add on the particular item. So maybe you can un allow me only two additions or three additions, so on and so forth, for a particular burger or a drink um, or any item that you're creating for me. Let's go for a quick quiz again, yeah? So now this thing and banner photos um, can actually show more than one dish. So is it true or is it false? It is true. Yes, your listing and banner photos can show more than one item. But like I said, it only should be in one photograph, not multiple collages and multiple photographs. So I think sometimes vendors get confused with this particular portion. Okay, next one, a true and false. You cannot have descriptions for categories. Is it true or is it false? And the answer is false. For every category, you can also have a description which explain what the category is about, right? So you can also have a category description. Let me take a breather here for a while and let's see if anyone has any other questions. Okay, so now let's go into the tips and tricks that we're talking about. So what can you do to reduce menu rejections and increasing efficiency? Firstly, creating a list of all the items that you have on Foodpanda or want to include on Foodpanda. So that's important. Next, obviously, categorizing them. Like I said, uh, in terms of any sort of seasonals, um, noodles, rice, beverages, burgers, salads, appetizers, and so on and so forth. And lastly, prepping the dish photos. We always highly suggest to vendors, if possible, start cooking your dishes and taking photographs of them. Do know you can use this photograph so multiple different platforms and just for your personal purposes on social media or if you have a website and so on and so forth. Now, how to organize your menu? I think this is a question that a lot of vendors ask us accordingly. Firstly, the basics, item description and category. Next will be pricing, and then obviously the variation of things, right? Now, how do you do this? Use the restaurant portal. Log into your restaurant portal. You should have got your login credentials when you join Foodpanda, so please check on it. If you do not have, go to the restaurant portal and just click forget password we will be able to assist you accordingly, yeah? So that you can see, we will be able to assist you accordingly, forgot your password. Next, in terms of item creation, toggle the menu management, click add new on the top hand right corner, and then select item, add your item, add your photograph, add your pricing, and accordingly change your items. Now, if you made a mistake, don't worry about it. 
because you can always edit your items even after it was approved. It will just have to go through another approval process. Very short, very quick, within 24 hours, things will be changed, right? So in case if you make a mistake with the uh, items that you uploaded yesterday and you want to edit it today, don't worry, you can do it again. Next, in terms of pricing, same thing, click on the item detail, just go scroll down and you can see the pricing portion, you can change it accordingly. If they ask you to upload a new menu of your new pricing, feel free to do so, and then you can move on accordingly. And lastly, variations, like I said, hot, cold, no ice, ice, and so on and so forth, you can just add those accordingly. Now, in terms of categories, this is something that we always encourage vendors to make it ever-changing so that your menu looks new and fresh at all times. So um, follow seasonal uh, menus, uh, follow new categories, uh, create some sort of new combo deals and so on and so forth. So this is where your categories can kind of come into play. Um, I'm not going to go into the details, but click add new, select category, um, and then just, you know, add in your category and then click save accordingly. Lastly, dish photo is something that you can upload later on. So upload uh, your menu first and then do your dish photos later on as well. So um, it can be one after another. It doesn't have to be concurrently just to launch your particular menu. So first, what you can do is launch your menu first and then add your photos accordingly when you have cooked them and upload them on the portal accordingly. Now let's look into common mistakes um, that vendors actually make. Um, the first common mistake that you make is obviously your dish photo is from other sources. We highly discourage this. We do not want vendors um, to kind of uh, take photographs from other vendors or even from like the internet and so on and so forth. Try to make it as authentic as possible. And you can just use your mobile phones to take a good photograph. So the right hand side one is perfect. So another thing um, that we also um, reject customers, uh, sorry, we reject vendors on is because of your photos are too blurry and the photos are too close up. So these are things that you also have to look into. Next uh, common mistake, when you want to change a price, you need to upload a new particular menu, right? So example, if your offline menu is uh, changed and you want to change the pricing for your online menu, you need to upload a new menu. So as you can see a photo here, they will always ask you to provide photos of your dine-in menu. And the dine-in menu has to have the name with the pricing. So just ensure on this portion. Um, lastly, your menu submitted does not contain the item name or prices that match your request. So a lot of times vendors are submitting their dining menu. Example, they, set, they submit a Western menu, but then your online menu is totally local or totally Asian. So it does not even match the description or the item or the pricing. So when the team, the content team is checking on currently, unfortunately, we will be rejecting such cases because we do not understand um, are you uploading a Western menu or is it an Asian menu or what is the difference that we are trying to make? So as you can see here, um, the item is pizza, but what they uploaded was like Caesar salad and then it went into the salad category instead of like example, the pizza category. Now, again, if you have made a mistake and you want to make changes, don't worry because you can always make changes on the restaurant portal. Next, we're going to be talking about what you should do um, for an unavailable item, right? A lot of times we upload maybe example, 50 different items on our restaurant portal, but maybe two months down the lane, we realize, oh, you know, maybe 50 is something that I cannot cope with and I want to make it 25. Or maybe from 50, you want to change it to 15 because, you know, this for that particular week, that is the only few items that you'll be selling. Don't worry, because you can just use your GoDroid device to make items unavailable. So items can be unavailable for today or unavailable indefinitely. So you will never be selling those items again. So again, select menu availability on your GoDroid and then toggle your desired menu item. And you just have to choose whether unavailable today or unavailable indefinitely. Okay, thank you. Now, lastly, we're going to cover about how to be more efficient um, in terms of your menus, very first thing is please 
copy your menus to different outlets. If you have more than one outlet on Food Panda, and obviously it's live on the restaurant portal, please always just copy your menu. So what you can do first is have one base menu, like example, 10 to 20 items which are similar across the different outlets. Copy those first. Then you can edit and add the different variations, example, fusion to normal, Asian to Western, and so on and so forth, right? So have a base menu and then make your variations. And then next will be obviously using your go drive to toggle between available and unavailable. How to copy menus? I think a lot of vendors ask me this question. Um, in the menu management section, um, there will be a button on the top hand right corner which says copy to outlets. Um, and you can use that to just copy all the whole menu to another particular outlet. Okay. Now, things to note, um, I want to say is uh, pending menu request will not be copied. So do know that uh, pending menu request will not be copied. Make sure all your requests have been approved first, then make the copies. And then uh, all menu items um, in this outlet will fully be replaced. So example, if I have um, 10 items on outlet one and maybe two items on outlet two, if you copy from outlet one to outlet two, whatever that is on outlet two will be totally erased and will be copied, uh, will be overshadowed by whatever that was on outlet one. So just make sure on that as well. Okay. And then all offers in this outlet will also be deleted. So do check on that. And lastly, ch uh, changes are permanent and cannot be undone. So once you've copied to the other outlets, you cannot undo it anymore. Okay, so I just want to share with it. But trust me, the button is a powerful button and it helps a lot of vendors who have multiple outlets. Now, so today I think we have covered, um, you know, the importance of menu management, uh, basic terms that you can use, obviously how to organize your menu, common mistakes that you go through, and obviously the how to be more effective, which is like I said, just copying all the different items um, to the different outlets, right? So now um, for the next one, I will be talking about um, the advanced version of menu management. So um, join that particular webinar as well to learn more. But for today, I think this is good. And I think we've learned a lot for sure, yeah? So any questions, uh, you know, please feel free to use the chat. Um, we hope that we've set you up for success right now and you've learned quite a bit with the webinar. I'm excited to have you guys back for the advanced menu management class as well. So do join us for that. Um, and as always, keep in touch. Um, please join us on our Facebook page right now. We are kind of thriving on that, kind of chatting with everybody. We have some games for everybody on the Facebook page as well. And just to create that community and closeness among us, right? Um, I hope everybody has a good day. Uh, good luck with your businesses. Um, and uh, thank you once again for using Fruit Panda. Bye-bye.